Well, welcome to our online service on this Father's Day, or as it's known in our church, Yorkie Sunday. Uh, that's because in our church we've got a bit of a tradition that we give out Yorkie bars with the motto, not for girls, on this day to all the dads and granddads, sons, uncles, all the men in the church. I've been trying to deliver them around, uh, but I'm sorry if I've not managed to get to you yet. So, let's sing our opening song of worship, which speaks to us about our amazing God. It's the song, Indescribable. To the depths of the sea Creations revealing your majesty From the colors of fall To the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All its So let us now pray together. Let us pray. Dear God, today on this Father's Day, we want to say thank you 
especially for all the dads, granddads, sons, uncles, men and boys. We thank you for who they are and for what they mean to us. I want to pray for new dad Josh and mum Courtney and say thank you for the safe arrival of their baby son Noah this week. And we also pray for anyone who for this day creates elements of sadness for them, maybe because of a relationship breakdown or loss. I ask God that you will support and comfort them. Amen. And so, uh, just for a bit of fun, I'd like to show you some images of fathers and their children taken over the years. After which, we're going to sing two songs together, the song Father God I Wonder and My Jesus, My Saviour. This will lead us into my message today, which has the title, Like Father, Like Son. Let's take a look at those images.
is the word juxtaposition. Now, you may have heard of this word before, or even use it yourself. But if not, this is what it means. Two things being placed close together with contrasting effect. A couple of examples of where we use it are when you put crisps on a sandwich you get the soft and the crunchy. Or when you put cold ice cream on warm apple pie. It just works. Two things which seem in total contrast 
yet go together, work together. So, how does this word lead me on to what I want to share with you this morning, especially on this Father's Day? Well, my message title is this, Like Father, Like Son. First, I want us to think about God. Now I know who God is, his character, his nature could be described in so many different ways. But for today, I just want to mention two. The first is Creator God. Let's hear a couple of different Bible verses that remind us of this. The first in Jeremiah 10, verses 12 to 13. But God made the earth by his power. He founded the world by his wisdom and stretched out the heavens by his understanding. When he thunders, the waters in the heavens roar. He makes clouds rise from the earth, from the ends of the earth. He sends lightning with the rain and brings out the wind from its storehouses. Perhaps appropriate verses for this week. And then Amos 4, verse 13. He who forms the mountains, who creates the wind, and who reveals his thoughts to mankind, who turns dawn to darkness, and treads on the heights of the earth. The Lord God Almighty is his name. Our God is the Creator God. Creation points to him. In fact, it was one of the reasons that I found my own faith. I just couldn't believe that it all just happened by chance. So much design, balance, so much beauty. God the Creator tells us that he is big and vast and powerful and mighty and creative. I love the way that some of this is expressed in the Chris Tomlin song that we sang earlier, indescribable. Let's remind ourselves of some of those lyrics again. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creations revealing your majesty. From the colours of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song that it brings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God, all powerful, untamable, awestruck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing God. This is our God, who we worship, we praise, we adore, we exalt, we stand in awe of. But then we have the juxta position. See, our Creator God is also our Heavenly Father. Yes, He's Almighty all-powerful, but he's not distant. He's not just out there watching from afar. Someone once said, he's not too far away to see and notice everything about each one of us. Now I know when we talk about Father God, perhaps especially on Father's Day, it can stir up different feelings for different people, depending on their own experience and relationship with their earthly Father. I want to say today that God is a good, good Father. 
You know, one of the best ways that this is illustrated for me is in the parable of the prodigal son. Many of you will know this story. It's when the youngest son takes his inheritance early. He goes off and squanders and wastes the money away. Eventually, he finds himself in the lowest of places. He decides to go home. Perhaps his dad might show him some mercy and give him a job as a servant or a hired hand. But then we read, don't we? Luke 15, verses 20. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead, but now he is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. You know, it's such a powerful picture of God, our Heavenly Father, who is full of grace and mercy, welcoming, forgiving, loving. I wonder if anyone who is watching today feels a bit like the younger son or a daughter. Maybe you feel that you have messed up. You feel that you have hit a low place. I believe you need to hear the words of your Heavenly Father today who says to you, come home, come home, come home. This is our God. You know, I love God in these juxtapositions. Powerful creator, yet heavenly father. Mighty God, yet loving dad. But like I said, uh, my title today is Like Father, Like Son. So now let's look at the Son, Jesus. In many ways, my talk today was inspired by the Christian song, The Lion and the Lamb. If you've not heard it before, then we're going to play it in the service a little bit later. Again, the song offers two pictures of Jesus, which I believe sit in a juxta position. First, let's look at Jesus as the lamb that was slain. The song says this, Our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain. For the sins of the world, his blood breaks the chains. Again, let's turn to God's word to read about this image. Revelation 5 verse 6 says this, Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the centre of the throne, encircled by four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which were the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the world. And John 1 verse 29. The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and he said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You know, many of you perhaps will know the Old Testament practice of laying hands on a lamb as a way of passing over their sin then killing the lamb as a sacrifice, as an atonement. Jesus on the cross took upon himself 
the sins of all mankind and his blood was shed as an atonement for all his sacrifice was paying the price once and for all jesus is the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world this image of jesus brings to me words like humility sacrificial selfless forgiving love the song says his blood breaks the chains so what chains might people feel that they are bound in at the moment perhaps chains of anger or addiction or fear you know i pray that you would bring them to jesus and that he might set you free today but then again we see jesus in this juxtaposition because jesus is also the lion of judah the song says our god is the lion the lion of judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles you know in the bible the devil is also referred to in 1 peter 5 as like a lion who comes to devour but then we read in revelations 5 verse 5 then one of the elders said to me do not weep see the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has triumphed he is able to open the scroll and its seven seals this is referring to jesus this is an image of jesus as a lion and it reminds us of his strength of his kingship of his authority and lordship of his victory and his sovereignty the song also reminds us that he is fighting our battles i wonder if there is anyone who is watching today who feels like they are in a battle at the moment i believe that jesus the lion of judah is with you he is fighting for you the song also says who can stop the lord almighty jesus is on mine and your side you know, St. Augustine in a sermon in 37 AD said these words, Jesus as a lamb reminds us of his sacrifice. Jesus as the lion speaks of his resurrection. In some ways, this was captured in the C.S. Lewis book, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Aslam was the lion, powerful and mighty. But he sacrifices his life for another for edmund but then there is a glorious resurrection victory aslam is alive again you know today on this father's day i just wanted to try and look at god and jesus again in maybe just a slightly different way through using that word the juxtaposition in the end we remember that god is in fact trinity he is free in one and today it's through the holy spirit that we encounter god the creator and the heavenly father that we encounter jesus the lion and the lamb one of the last lyrics from the song before we sing it is this every knee will bow before him perhaps this is an image of heaven one day but as we think about and i pray experience something again of god and jesus through the holy spirit today may then in response it start now with my knee bowed and your knee bowed to our God, to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit. Amen.
So, now, let's listen, and I hope you will join in, to the song, The Lion and the Lamb, after which we will be led in prayer by Jenny Turner. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with grateful, thankful and expectant hearts, knowing that you delight in hearing our prayers and knowing that you answer them in your own wise way. We thank you that even though our buildings are closed, the church worldwide is alive and thriving today and that many people are actively seeking faith 
some for the first time. We thank you for the many initiatives such as the UK Blessing Song and Thy Kingdom Come that have given encouragement and hope globally. But we also know that your church is a suffering church, that many of our brothers and sisters worldwide face hardship, poverty, persecution, imprisonment and even death because of their faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for agencies such as Tear Fund and Open Doors who work tirelessly to bring relief and hope for the future. We ask that you will guide governments to govern fairly and honestly and we ask that people everywhere will begin to accept each other with greater understanding and compassion regardless of faith or colour. Lord you have called us to be your representatives of Jesus Christ here at Chanson Community Church. We ask your forgiveness Father for the many times we have failed you, for the times when we have been more concerned with our own welfare rather than looking to the needs of others. We are weak but you are strong. Help us to keep our eyes focused on Jesus to give us strength and purpose and help us not to become too fearful by the uncertainty of the times we are living in. Today on this special Father's Day we thank you that you are our Father, that we are your children, that your love for us is beyond measure and that in you we find security and hope. We thank you for fathers everywhere who are working to support families and who are providing good role models for their children. We ask that you will encourage them in what they are doing. We pray for fathers and families where there is disharmony, where there are particular pressures and stresses, and we ask that you will bring your peace to bear, that families in crisis will get help. We pray for any people in our fellowship who are experiencing difficulties of any kind, and we ask that you will draw close to them and minister to them as their need requires. Lord Almighty, we ask that you will have mercy on your people. We ask for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit to inspire us and urge us forwards. We ask that you will show your hand in a mighty way to bring healing and justice for the nations. We ask that more people will bow the knee and acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. Come Lord Jesus, come. Bring revival. Amen.
So again, thank you for joining us for our online worship from Chatterton Community Church in Oldham today. I pray that you will continue to know God's presence and blessing as you go through this week. Amen.